What is up everybody, 3D Theory here, and today we're gonna unbox the Creality CR6 Max. And I don't know if you saw my previous video, but as you can tell, we're on the table that the S5 used to be at. And I'm happy to say I sold that thing. And I wanna say that it's a good machine and I'm sure it was a great machine for its time. But as technology continues to move forward and new 3D printing technology start to emerge, um, it's undeniable that the new stuff uh, just is better overall. One of the things I didn't like about the S5 in particular was the noise that it made. It made a lot of noise. It sounded like some techno music was playing every time it was printing. Um, so to change it out, I got another big uh, 3D printer, but it's quiet like the Ender Neo that I got as well as my CR10 Smart. They're actually both running right now. And all you're hearing is the fans. They're really quiet. And these are really great printers. I really am enjoying using these two printers here. So in the same vein, I got this. Uh, Creality CR6 Max. It looks a lot like those two printers over there and um, I heard it's quiet as well and I can't wait to open this so let's get this started. The first thing I want to mention is that this is a 400 by 400 by 400 millimeter print area um, and the S5 was a 500 so we're definitely decreasing in size but I had some specific use cases for the S5 that I ended up using it for and I didn't see myself needing such a big printer in the future so I ended up getting this one and let's get this unboxed. And I would say if you could find this on a sale, the price tag is much better than the S5 as well. And you're getting newer technology. All right, let's open this up. First things first, it gives you some caution. Recommended to use Creality Slicing software. And that's where I stopped reading this because I only use the Creality Slicing software, which is pretty much a a version of Cura, a Creality version of Cura. All right, this is looking sweet already. So they give you this really nice little booklet. It's an invitation to the Creality Cloud and also the user manual. The design of this looks, reminds me a lot of the Ender Neo that I got. Got yourself a spool here, just a spool of white filament. Looks like some of the clamps we're gonna be using to build the machine as well as the screws. Got your power cable, run of the mill, your spool holder, which reminds me a lot of the Creality CR10 Smart spool holder. We got the Z support bars here, which I'm really glad to see. We got the oh so beautiful touch screen. That's looking great. And another thing that I really like about this machine as opposed to the S5 is that everything is built in. You don't have a power supply box on the side that's taking up more space to an already very large 3D printer. Um, again, this is very much like the Smart. It go, it's it's going to go on to the side there, um, if, if not exactly like the Smart. All right, now let's lift this top foam layer off. Oh, we got the beautiful Creality CR6 Max. It's got that beautiful, big, large glass bed, and I'm loving it. So I'm gonna pull this thing out here very carefully. This is the gantry right here. It's completely separate with two Z screws, which is great. Let's take out this piece of foam here. Next, let's take out the machine itself. Oh, that is one sturdy machine. I'm loving it so far. Oh, it's definitely heavier, that's for sure. And that's about it in the box. Okay. This thing fits on this table like a charm. See how far back the build plate goes. That's not too bad actually. That's actually perfect. Now this table does wobble just a little bit when it's top heavy. So what I intend on doing is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put a strap around this bottom part here that connects around to the legs here. All right now let's go ahead and get that gantry on there. And we're just gonna grab the screws that belong to it. And I'm gonna bring this over to the edge. And here are the gantry screws, much like the Ender Neo. And we're just gonna stick it on the bottom, two for each side here. All right, now that that's screwed down, I'm gonna add two more screws on this side here. All right, now that we're finished with the screws for the gantry, let's go ahead and put those Z support bars here. All right, here are those Z support bars. And 
And these are really simple to put together. We got the two screws that go in between to connect them as one. So just grab this, screw that in there. Likewise, we're just gonna grab this and screw it in here. All right, that's nice and tight. And likewise for the second one. Okay, and then we're gonna have these screws here, which go on the top and bottom of those Z support bars. But we have a nut that screws on about halfway for each one, so we can adjust it as necessary, just like that. I really like that this 3D printer, like the CR10 Smart, first off has a glass bed, and second, has no bed leveling knobs. It just has those silicone risers down at the bottom, so it doesn't really need any bed leveling knobs. All right, so then we're just gonna stick those screws up in here as deep as we need it. And this is gonna, this nut is gonna lock it into place. So we're just gonna give some wiggle room there and we're gonna attach it to both top and bottom here. All right, now there's three packs of screws that come with it. So we don't wanna use the M5X10 for these Z support bars. We wanna use the M5X20s and the M5X12. And so the 20s, which are the longer ones, are gonna go on the bottom and the 12s are gonna go up top here and I'll show you that right now. We'll start with the 12s actually. All right, so here's the spot where the 12s are gonna go in, the, sc the screws there. So they give us two, one for each Z support bar. So we're gonna grab that Z support bar. I'm gonna stick that screw in through here. And we're just gonna turn it by hand. And likewise, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now that both of those uh, Z bars are connected up top. Now I'm gonna use that M5X20s, which are the longer screws down for the bottom, and I'll show you that as well. There are four screws here, and just in the middle of the top row of screws, that's where the long screw is gonna go in. And this is the part where we're gonna need to adjust. Actually, this, this should actually pretty, pretty much fit perfectly here. Well, wow, that's, pretty, that's pretty neat. That was pretty perfect there. So we're just gonna tighten those nuts there that are on, that locks it into place, and we are good to go. This is nice and sturdy here. And just as a safety measure, we're gonna tighten it with the Allen wrench. And same with the top here. All right, that's nice and tight. And we're gonna just do the same thing on the other side there. All right, next we're gonna install the spool holder. But first, we're gonna install that little cylinder part there which you just put it in and twist, and it's nice and secure in there. All right, as far as I know, you just hang it up like that and lock it into place. All right, now we just install the spool there, spool holder there. It doesn't quite touch the floor, which is strange if you ask me, but there you have it. All right, now that we got the spool holder installed, we're gonna go ahead and make all the connections and turn this thing on. There's one main cable here, that goes straight to the extruder. And you pretty easily just grab the longest part of the cable and stick it in there and it clips right in. There you have it, that's clipped in nice and easy. And then you have this second cable here that's connected to the same line. And that simply goes right over here, right there. All right, now that's in there nice and easy. Next we have this cable that was taped down right here it's just simply gonna plug into there. All right, now that that's plugged in, we have the Z1 cable here. So we're gonna see where this is supposed to fit into. And cleverly enough, this just wraps around and connects to that motor back there, right over here. All right, and now I'm just gonna wrap this around and get that connected. All right, we've connected that and it's ready to go. And likewise, we have a, a Z2 cable here, as well as another cable which connects to the screen itself. So I'm gonna grab that Z2 cable there and just plug it into the back of the same, in the same area, that uh, motor that drives the Z screw up. All right, now that that's in there, we can get the screen installed. All right, 
And here is that screen, really nice screen if I may add. And we're just gonna hook it up right there with the two screws they provided. And I'm just gonna take this off here, this protective layer. I really like the design here. It's squared off, but then over here, it tapers in like that. I really like how they added that little detail in there. And here are those two screws that were left. I'm just gonna grab one, put it there. And we're just gonna bring it over to this thing and screw it in right there. All right, that's screwed in there. And lastly, we're just gonna put in this cable into the back. Just gonna grab that cable and pop it straight into the back there. All right, now that that's in, all we need to plug in now is the power cable. And here's the power cable. And after that, I think we're ready to turn this thing on. It was a pretty simple installation. Very happy with how easy that was. I got that plugged in. I'm just gonna wrap this around into the back. And there's a plug right there for us. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna wanna slide this wire all right now that we plugged it in I'm just gonna take this protective film off and we're ready to power this thing up here we go all right that's looking good wow that is incredibly quiet so far I am loving it. There is one thing I forgot to do, and I, I can do it afterwards, which is connect these wires together, the extruder and this wire. They have little twist ties over here that I can use to connect, so I'll make sure to do that after it goes through its automatic bed leveling function. All right, and I just created some tension on these here. And this is what I like about the CR6 Max as opposed to the CR10S5 is that it's got two of these Z rods to really stabilize the build plate as it goes backwards and forwards and has enough power to do so. A lot of people were complaining about the CR10S5 that it only had one and it wasn't enough. And I would have to agree with that. And there's no sound whatsoever. I could barely even hear the fan noises. The fan noises are coming from the two printers over there. This one is just completely silent. All right, that didn't take much time at all. Now that I finished its automatic bed leveling sequence, I wanna make a couple of adjustments. I wanna bring this a little forward. I wanna show you the toolbox that we haven't gotten to, and I wanna bind these two wires together so they're supporting each other. All right, first things first, I wanna bring this a little forward because this wire is touching the wall here. and I'd rather it not touch the wall at all. So I'm gonna bring it just a little bit forward. All right, that ought to do the trick. Now that that's taken care of, I wanna bind these together. Okay, now, that there, now there's this one here. In total, there's three. So one in the front, one in the middle, and one towards the extruder. All right, there you go. Now that that's supporting each other, this should actually do a really good job. I would like to add my keychain that I have another one of somewhere laying around, like I did for the S5, but that would have to be done at a later time. Okay, now let's take a look at the toolbox. Let's open that up. Very nice, first thing we got is this spatula, number four spatula here. And we got a really nice tool set here like you see in the S5. You got the needle to unclog the nozzle. You got your SD card here. Looks like they give you some extra nozzles, a card reader, which is always nice to have. Some other tools as you'll need them. And that's about it, that's actually really nice. I really like how they include these in there. I'm gonna leave the spatula out of there and just put it in my drawer. They usually give these here, which I would prefer much more than this one here, but we'll give this a try too. This may be my new favorite, we'll see. All right, now let's get to printing some really fun stuff on this machine. And in order to do that, we gotta take this sticker off, which is where you put the SD card. And it says here, this side up. So I'm assuming it's trying to tell us that we should stick this upside down like that. And that is correct. Okay, let's take a look at what they got in there. I'm gonna go back. All right, now we're gonna go to print. Now we got <laughs> some interesting stuff. I don't really know what they are, but let's go with the Fishu 48. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm curious. So <laughs> let's click on it 
and click print. And I'll meet you guys back when this is finished printing out. All right, this ought to be the ugliest thing I've ever seen. This was the Fishu 48 and it took only 54 hours <laughs> and 50 minutes. Um, but as ugly as this model is, it looks really clean. That's a really clean looking model. Oh, wow. And that just comes right off the build plate. This thing is super heavy. <laughs> it definitely used up a lot of filament. That's why I got my white, my red, and my brown. But look at the quality of this thing. That is an ugly 3D model. But the print, the print is clean. Wow, look at that. Honestly, this thing, this thing right here is probably the cleanest print I ever had. It's cleaner than what the Creality CR10 Smart would produce at this height. And it could produce it. It can fit. So the Creality CR6 Max, beautiful machine, super worth it in my opinion. And I can't wait to print out some more <laughs> appealing stuff, not as strange looking as this. This is like, apparently supposed to be a flying squirrel. That's what Fai Shu means. But the print quality is amazing. I switched out the filament three times and it continued without any hiccups. The S5, on the other hand, would hit the 3D model and it would just, it's over from there. I couldn't switch out filaments. So the resume function, in other words, wasn't great. But man, does this printer do a good job. CR6 Max, surprised it hasn't gotten as much, let's just say fame or buzz, because it's a great, machine 400 by 400 by 400 millimeters build plate beautiful machine you saw i didn't even have to struggle the glass cooled down and i just picked that right up there's a little bit of stringing just ever so slightly we can't you can't even see it in the camera i think but this is great all right guys well we got some fun stuff coming up for you make sure to subscribe Click that like button, click that notification bell to get notified when my next video comes out. It's great to have you guys part of the community. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.